Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Alright, so today I'm going to be painting face off and I'm going to be sipping on my coffee and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and prime 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, green oxide, Mars black, burnt umber, which I will call brown, chrome yellow, burnt sienna, which I will call rust, cobalt blue, and fluorescent purple. And of course, you can switch up those colors as well if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil, and then I have three brushes. I have, <clears throat> excuse me, a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number six round synthetic brush, and I have a number one round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you through your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same kind of paints and the pencil and all that good stuff. So that's down there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna draw an outline of our rhino. I'm gonna be using my pencil and I'm gonna give you some markers and we'll connect those markers and hopefully by the time we're done we'll have a nice basic shape for our rhinoceros. <laughs> so I'm gonna start up in the top right hand corner. I'm gonna come in about three, three and a half inches from the right hand side, make myself my first little marker in through here. <clears throat> Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the center of my canvas up on the top, and I'm gonna come down almost halfway. If this is about the halfway mark, I'm maybe about an inch, inch and a half above that, and I'm gonna to go to the right, just about a half of an inch or so. That's gonna be my second marker. My third marker is gonna be over from this one, about three inches and down about a half of an inch. So right now, this marker is about a third of the way over from the right hand side, maybe about six and a half inches or so. I'm gonna come almost between these two, maybe a little bit closer to this one, maybe over about an inch or so, and I'm gonna come straight down for my next marker to right about here. So this is about a third of the way up my canvas, somewhere in through here. Then my next marker I'm gonna make, I'm gonna come directly below this one, all the way down to the bottom of my canvas, make myself another marker down and through here. And then we just have one more marker, which is going to be over here on the left-hand side of the canvas. So this is gonna be a little bit below this one, maybe about an, a half of an inch to an inch, and you're gonna come all the way over to the left-hand side and stop about two inches away from the edge of the canvas. So somewhere in through here. So right now we should have one, two, three, four, five, six markers. Now we're just gonna connect the dots. <laughs> so I'm gonna do these two first. So this is gonna represent the forehead of the rhino. So I'm gonna come kind of straight down for about three inches or so. And when I say straight, it doesn't have to be a super straight line, just in a straight vicinity. Anytime you're doing an animal or something that has round organic edges like this, you wanna kind of give it a little bit of movement to it. So I come down a little bit like that, and then I'm just gonna kind of bring it off in a diagonal towards this marker. And again, you can see my line is not perfect and it's not intended to be. Then I'm gonna take from here and I'm gonna meet it into here. So this is gonna give me the, the horn, the top short horn of our 
cute little rhinoceros. I don't know if rhinoceroses are, are intended to be cute, but this one's going to be cute in my book. <laughs> so I'm going to bring that right up and through there. I'm going to then connect this dot to here. This is going to be the outside part of this smaller horn, and I'm going to have a little bit of a curve to this. So I'm going to bring this out in through here and then just match it into this marker in through here. And this can have bumps on it. It doesn't have to be perfectly round. These horns come in all different kinds of shapes and sizes. Then I'm going to connect this marker to here and this is going to be the long horn. So this one I'm going to kind of come down just a little bit and I'm going to slowly kind of gradually get it to go in an upward motion in through here and then we'll just bring it up and meet this marker up in through here. I am going to round this edge a bit for this horn in through here so I think I want this to actually come down just a little bit more. I want to slope it just a little bit. So the beautiful thing about pencil is you get to kind of just make your, adjust your lines as you want to, but I wanted that to kind of slope a little bit more as it um, entered that horn in through there. And then I'm going to meet this marker to this bottom one in through here. And again, I want to kind of give this edge of the horn a little bit of a curved line, and then this is going to be really kind of wide. The horn's going to be pretty darn wide down in through here. And of course you can have little bumps as you go along and you're just going to kind of get it to gradually go up into this marker. And then we are going to be utilizing our large brush for the next step. So once you've got your horn and your, your two horns and your head on here, you can put your pencil down, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint our background. So it's gonna be this big mass area in through here. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and I'm going to be using green and black. I'm gonna make myself just a nice dark forest green kind of color and utilize that as my background. So I've pre-mixed my color so you can see where I'm headed, but I'll show you how I got there. So this is about the tone I'm going for. I just want to forewarn you, as you're mixing your green, just know that it'll get a little bit darker as it dries. So when you're planning for it, just you know, know that make it a little bit lighter than, than you um, want in the end. So you can save some of your green for later, just in case you want to utilize it anywhere else. So I just separated out a little bit of that. And then I'm going to add to the rest of my green a little bit of black at a time and spin it around. The black will very easily take over really fast, so you don't want to put a lot in all at once. Just add little, little bits at a time and just keep spinning it around until you get it into the intensity or the darkness that you want. You can see it's it's turning dark really fast on me, but I, I want to be cautious, so I'm just adding a teeny tiny bit of my black at a time. That's looking pretty darn good to me, so I'm just going to kind of mix it in with the rest of my green. And then once you've got the desired green color that you would like, you're just going to paint in the entire background. So. I don't really need any special brush strokes as I'm doing this because I know that I'm going to be attempting to achieve a nice solid coat, which might mean that I want or need to do two layers on this. So by doing two layers, which I anticipate doing, I don't really need a specific brush stroke. I can really just kind of put it on here. You can use a left to right brush stroke, you can use a diagonal brush stroke, whatever works for you. If you're going for a solid color, the direction of your brush strokes shouldn't really matter because by the time you're done with adding your layers or, at, or getting it to that solid um, ending resting place, you won't be able to see your brush strokes. So if you were to just do one layer and you could see the streakiness from it because acrylic paint tends to be translucent. So you will most likely, if you only have one layer on there, you'll see like thin spots and thick spots, which will allow you to see those brush strokes. So for me, again, I will go through and I'm gonna do this one layer. I'll bring it all the way up to the edge of my pencil mark and then I will most likely let it dry for a minute or blow dry it or something of that nature and then just put a second coat on it and it'll get into a nice solid color. You may be working with paint that allows it to be a nice solid color on your first shot but for me because I use these bristle brushes which are 
firm and they move my paint around a lot. They tend to leave little scratch marks and therefore I like to do a second coat, especially if I'm going for a nice solid one tone kind of background. But again, if you feel that yours looks fantastic after this one step, or maybe you want to go for an out of focus type of look for that background, and in which case you wouldn't necessarily need to have a solid coat, but that's going to be a personal judgment call on your part. So you feel free to, if you want, go ahead and do a second layer or make it into whatever tonal kind of value that you want. And then we will be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your background all nice and done again, and if you want to do two layers on it, feel free to do so. And then you can just wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're gonna do the base coat for our Rhino. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and I'm gonna be using black, brown, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix myself kind of a light to medium gray, brownish kind of gray, so we can utilize that as our base coat. And I, of course, have magically pre-mixed it so you can see where I'm headed. So this is about where I'm headed. And again, it will turn a little bit darker as it dries. So how I got there, first of all, I um, separated out a little bit of my brown and my black for use later because I will want to use my true black and my true brown later so I want I don't want to mix this all into the gray and then what I did was I took a good amount of brown and a little bit of black you don't need a lot of the black again because it really can take over and then I mixed in some white into my equation and the white will turn it light really, really fast, and the black will turn it dark really, really fast. So just kind of utilize those two in a cautious and a slow kind of um, mixing process, and you will eventually get it to the tonal value that you want. I'm gonna add a little bit more white into my equation. That's looking pretty good. And then once you've got it into the color that you want, we're just gonna paint the entire rhino in with this medium gray color. I like using brown within my grays because to me that makes it look a little bit more warmer and a little bit more of a natural color, especially when I'm doing um, like the skin on an elephant or a rhino or something that has this really textural type of skin to it. So I like using that, that brown in there. And I'm going to go right up to the edge of my green. So if I run into any wetness on my green, I'm okay with that. I'm just going to blend it right into my rhino. And I want to make sure that I don't have any um, unpainted canvas between my rhino and my background. So I just take my time as I am nearing the edge of the of the outline. And of course you can certainly utilize a small brush if you wanted to as you go along these edges. And I am definitely making it so they're not super clean lines or straight lines. I want mine to have a little bit of movement in it. I want it to show that there is um, lumps and bumps on these horns and that they have a lot of character and, and shape to them. So that's why I give that edge a little bit of a wobbly type of line. And then I'll do the same thing on, on the horn. So I'm gonna bring this and color in this big mass area. And then when I get to that edge, I'm just gonna utilize my brush right along that edge and bring it all the way to my green. And as I'm doing that, I can add little little bumps here and there or just, you know, whatever has happened with my um, my green, I can just utilize that, that thought process and just kind of fill it in all the way to the edge. And that's gonna give me a nice organic shape to this horn. And then once we've got this done, we're actually gonna switch brushes to our small brush. So I'm just gonna kind of get this whole thing in and make any little modifications and tweaks that I want to along the way. You do not need to do a second coat on this gray because we will be um, painting a lot on top of it. So there's no need to get this coverage on the gray perfect. So if yours is not perfect, at this point, do not worry about it in the least bit because you're gonna be adding all kinds of information and wrinkles and shadows and highlights and all kinds of other stuff 
on top of this. So you can just put this large brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the base coat for our bird. I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'm gonna be using just white paint. So I do wanna forewarn you that before you start this step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take that extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. It only needs to be dry where you're gonna put the bird. Um, and I'm going to be using white paint as my base coat because I want the colors of the bird to be really vibrant and I want them to take on that true cobalt blue and that fluorescent purple. So I know that because we've done a, a dark base to it, if I was just to apply those colors on top of the dark base, they would take on some of that tonal value of the background. So I'm going to start with a white base, which is in essence gonna put the primer coat on and make those colors really vibrant when I do go to apply them in a little while. So when I teach birds, I typically teach that all birds can start with two basic shapes, an egg for the body and a circle for the head. The, on the body part, the egg, the pointy part of the egg will be where the tail is. And then the circle is the head. And this can be for any kind of bird. It can be for a flamingo or an eagle or a penguin, any type of bird. They all, you can start them in the same way. And then they have different length necks or different kind of feathers or different tails so that you morph them into that particular bird once you've got the egg and the circle on. <laughs> so this particular bird is really cute. It's small. Its head is right next to its body. So we're gonna kind of overlap our egg and our circle. So I'm gonna start with my egg. And I'm gonna have my bird about this big. So if you were to kind of go straight up from your beak or from your um, from your horn, which is about two inches away from the edge of the canvas, and come straight up from that, I would say maybe about two inches away from the edge of the canvas and then or from the top of the canvas, and then come in maybe just a little bit. That's about as tall as I'm gonna have my my bird. So that just kind of gives me a starting point. So I'm going to come down, I would say about two inches from that. This is going to be the top of my, or maybe an inch and a half. This will be the top of my egg, and I'm going to, my egg portion of my, of my body, and I'm going to bring this down in through here. My bird is going to be sitting on top of the horn, and its body is going to be kind of on the other side. So we'll see the little feet here. The tail part is going to be kind of behind the horn. So I am going to make my egg in this vicinity. I'm gonna skip over my horn part a little bit and then just bring this out, I would say to about here. So it's kind of like an upside down teardrop type of an egg shape. And then for my circle, I'm gonna have my circle starting up in through here. It's gonna come about this wide in through here. And then on the right hand side, it's gonna be maybe about this wide. So the, the circle for this particular bird is relatively large compared to the body aspect of it. And then I'm gonna put myself a little bit of a beak. I want this beak to kind of be looking down at my, um, my rhino. So I'm gonna have it starting about a little bit past the halfway point down that circle. And I'm just gonna kind of have it coming out almost about uh, like three quarters of an inch to an inch kind of down in the direction of the rhino, something like that. I'm gonna close off this back gap on the, on the head, something like that. And then I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a tail feather coming down this side of the, of the rhino. And the tail feather is going to be, I would say about half the length of the main egg part. You don't need it to be too, too long and just splay it out a little bit at the bottom. And then I'm gonna color in this whole section with white paint. So you can adjust those edges as much as you want to and then just color it in with white paint. And for the next step, we will be using our medium brush. So once you've got your shape for your bird and you've got it just painted in with a white base. It, again, it doesn't have to be a perfect white base. This is just gonna give us the 
the makings of nice, of vibrant colors and bringing it right to my horn in through here. And even the little edges that you don't even really have to do anything with fluffing out feathers or anything right now, we will we'll tackle that when we put the color on. And then you can uh, put this brush away. We're gonna be using our medium brush for the next step. So you can just get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first coat to our eye and we're putting our shadows in place on the rhino. So I say it with hesitation because it's also, they're shadows, but they're also going to be kind of the, the start of our wrinkles because they're shadows within wrinkles, which makes you be able to see them. So I'm going to call it the first step to the eye and and shadows. So we're going to be putting shadows all along like the bottom of the horn in through this area over here, the bottom of this horn. We'll put our eye in place somewhere in this vicinity and we'll in essence kind of start our wrinkles with the shadows that are inside the wrinkles. So I'm going to start, I've got my medium brush, I'm going to start with some black paint on my brush. I am going to, I, I don't know if I said the colors I'm using, black, brown, and gray or will be the colors. So I'm going to start by putting my eye in place. So my eye is going to be in this vicinity. It's going to be about halfway up this horn and it's going to be about three, three and a half inches from the edge of my canvas over here. I'm going to start it with a circle that's about, I would say, an inch to an inch and a half as wide as it is tall. So something like that will give me a start to it. And then I'm going to pull out a little bit of a little pointy part over on this right hand side in kind of in an upward direction. And then I'm going to pull out a little bit of a similar kind of um, point down in this bottom left hand corner. So this is just going to give us the um, starting point for the eye. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting my wrinkles in place around the eye. And I don't want them to go too, um, too much. I just really am kind of looking to give myself the, the information for the eyelid and maybe the saggy wrinkles that are underneath um, the eye in through here that kind of tells the story of the eye socket of sorts. So I'm gonna have black, but I also am gonna pick up a little bit of gray on my brush too. This will just kind of keep me in control. And I'm gonna give myself, uh, I need a little bit more black so we can see it. This will just give me the information as to where I kind of want these, um, these gestural kind of lines to go. And they're gonna give me the start and the, um, the information as to where I want my my wrinkles and kind of the shape of the eye to be. I'm going to put maybe a couple more up in through here, giving myself a little bit more um, wrinkles up in that top upper portion above the eye. And then I'm just going to kind of bring this up into the, um, the head area. So this will just kind of give me that starting point around the eye where I want the um, the wrinkles of sorts to go around the eye. It's given me the um, kind of depth that I'm that I'm s searching for in this particular area. And then once I've kind of got that in in shape, and the gray helps me to um, make these lines so they're not too solid. I like when I'm doing wrinkles to have these kind of sketchily type of lines. It to me makes it look much more natural. So once I've got that kind of in place. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on my other areas that are going to have these really dark, deep shadows and wrinkles and stuff. So I know that I want the bottom sides of my horns. So right now I have gray and black on my brush. I'm going to pick up some brown as well. And I'm going to do this entire bottom side. I think I need a little bit more black bottom side of this horn in through here. And I'm going to pull up almost um, divots within the horn. So I've got and if you didn't have bumps along the edges, don't worry. You can kind of imply them with these, um, these curved type of directional brush strokes that I'm creating, creating in through here. And they don't just have to be black and or brown. You can mix in some of that gray with them. I'm wiping my brush off of my paper towel so I can get these to just kind of blend in a little bit with that gray um, base color that we had. So just kind of 
working them in so I, they have a little bit of a blending aspect to them. You don't need them to blend entirely into the gray, but if you can get them to blend a little bit, that would be great. That's gonna give you um, a nice natural kind of look to it. And what we just did here, we're gonna go ahead and do a similar type of thought process on the bottom of the of this big horn in through here. So I just reloaded my brush with black and brown. And I'm in essence gonna give myself this really dark area at the bottom of the horn. It doesn't have to be, again, a solid line. You can even leave little peaks of that gray along the edge to, it, to imply that maybe it's catching a little bit of the light from the other side of the animal. So don't feel that you have to make that entirely black. My horn stops about here and this is where the the skin of the bottom part of the face kind of takes over so i'm going to tell the viewer just that by giving them another directional kind of brush stroke in through here and you can certainly do it a couple times if you want to and then just get that to kind of blend in with the gray i'm picking up some of my gray right now just so i can get this to blend in and the messier your lines are, the more natural this is going to look. So I'm just kind of getting it to work its way and really just kind of talk to that gray that's underneath without overdoing it. Um, I definitely want this bottom side to be nice and dark, so I'm utilizing the brown and the black. And whenever I feel like I need it or want it to blend in with that gray and make it look like it is really um, just kind of transitioning over into the lighter side, you just can pick up a little bit of that gray and get these to kind of overlap in in with one another. And I'm just kind of rubbing them together. Um, again, I'm not going for a perfect blend because I want to make sure that it looks like it's got that textural kind of effect that I feel a rhino's horn would have. <laughs> but if you want yours to be nice and smooth and you know have that nice, soft, um, really, you know, smooth look to it. You can certainly blend that out a little bit more. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing down in through here. So black and brown is where I'm starting. I'm going to have a lot of kind of darkness down in this bottom right hand corner, and I'm going to bring it up in what I feel to be the directions of the wrinkles. So I've got wrinkles in through here, so maybe I've got some wrinkles coming down in this direction on the face. This is gonna be a whole bunch of just dark um, creases and stuff from the, the, from the face. So I'm just kind of bringing up and rubbing in to my, um, to my base coat these darker tones. And I'm not overdoing it. Again, I just really want to imply that there is wrinkles and there's um, some type of almost direction to some of these wrinkles. But if you think of like an elephant and or a rhino, those wrinkles at times almost look like they crisscross over one another. So don't feel like you have to have them in a perfect order and that they all have to be going in the same exact direction and they all have to tell the same exact story. That's, that's not the case. You can, you know, have these darker areas that kind of just dip in a little bit. You can have multiple tones in those, in those wrinkles. So know that it's not a, 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 a process that needs to have distinct order to it, but you do want there to be um, some kind of thought process that tells the viewer, you know, what, part of that body that is. So again, these directional brush strokes on the horns made that tell the story that that's a kind of a separate object than the skin. Maybe the skin has a little bit more smoothness to it and we will, you know, we can uh, imply that when we add our final layer onto it. But right now I'm just kind of getting my dark areas in and the start of those wrinkles. I'm going to do the same thing up on this top right hand part of the head. So I know I'm going to have it really bright in through here. So I want a little bit of what I did down here, this darkness kind of over here to almost emerge into my into my big beast here my I don't know if I, I think rhinos I think there's nice ones and there's not nice ones so we're gonna pretend like this is one of the nicer rhinos so I'm just kind of rubbing in a little bit of shadow over here on the right side just so we can feel the shape of that particular
another object. I'm going to pick up a little bit of my gray just to make sure that I've got this, you know, all kind of blended in with it. And again, there's not many wrinkles up top here for um, that I was able to detect, but I know that there is, you know, the texture in the in the skin. So just making sure I've got a little bit of those um, some different tones within it. So that's where I'm taking the remnants on my brush and just kind of rubbing it into certain areas so I can get a little bit of different tones of that gray to happen. And then we are going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your shadows and your eye in place, you can put this uh, medium brush away, take out your small brush, and I can stop here and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our eye. I'm gonna use my small brush, and the colors I'm using are rust yellow, white and black and maybe a little gray too <laughs> but i'll call them out as i use them so what i'm going to first do is i'm going to put a tiny bit of rust and yellow on my brush at the same time i'm going to be creating what i'll call the colored part of the eye down in this bottom left hand corner i'm going to be doing a little bit of an arcing line pr providing me with some of the black still left in this corner because we're going to be um, turning that gray in a minute. And then I'm going to just kind of bring this up towards this uh, right bottom as well. You can really make your eye to be as colorful as you wanted. But when I was looking at these, it's really hard to detect the color part on Rhino's eyes because they're so small. <laughs> so you had to, I had to find a really good photo in order to um, use as reference to actually see the color part on these eyes. So if you don't get much detail on yours, don't worry. I just picked up a tiny bit more yellow and I think I'm gonna pick up a little bit more rust just to enhance this just a little bit more. And once I've got that on there, and you don't need to, again, you don't need to do much, just a teeny tiny bit will, will suffice. And then I'm going to just wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put a little bit of gray in through here just to um, make it like that's the there's a little skin type of part on the sitting right next to the eye in through here. And I'm not going to color in all, all color it all the way to the edge because I want to make it look like there's a little bit of, of detail in through there. I can even do the same thing back on this back corner of the eye in through here. And we'll be putting a little bit more detail around the eye itself in a minute, but this just gets me going. I'm gonna put a little bit of water on my brush with this gray so I can put what I refer to as like the haze or glaze over the eye. So without going all the way to the top of the eye, I'm gonna put a little bit of this gray plus water on the eye in through here so it looks a little bit see-through and provides you with the, um, the shape of the eye. So this is where Less is more, but using water on your brush definitely helps to get this to be a little bit see-through and is gonna make it look a little bit more natural. And I go a little bit over the um, the pupil part a bit just to um, show that whatever that glaze or haze is, help, it also goes over the, um, the pupil part. Then I'm gonna just wipe my brush off on my paper towel pick up a tiny bit of white paint, and give myself a little bit of a sparkle within the eye. So a little maybe dash and pull down and a little bit of a curved motion. You don't have to do much for the sparkle because that's just gonna be a reflection from somewhere. It doesn't need to be much at all. I'm gonna wipe my brush off. I'm gonna pick up maybe a little bit of white and gray and give myself a, just a little bit of a a highlight maybe at the the skin part uh, that rests around the eye. I don't need to do much, just a little bit of the gray and white giving it this piece of skin down here, a little bit of shape and making it look like it's popping out from the um, underneath the eye a little bit. 
I'll do the same thing onto this little eyelid part with a little bit of white and gray. And again, this just helps to give the, the skin around the eye a little bit of form and allows the viewer to understand that this part is maybe popping out a little bit more than the eye itself. And then once I've got this on here, and I'm just playing with my white and my gray right now, maybe giving um, this area in through here a little bit more intensity on the, on the white so it looks like it pops out a little bit more. And then once I've got that, I'm going to put some little eyelashes on. So these are going to come right in front of the eye in through here. So I'm going to start with a tiny bit of black, which you might not be able to see much of it when I put the, the black on, but the black helps me to just kind of, in my mind's eye, tell me where I want these little eyelashes to be. And then I pick up a touch of white without washing my brush. And this is a real kind of quick like little flicking type of motion that I'm doing. I don't want there to be a ton of information or a ton of um, these eyelashes. I just really want to give it the um, illusion that there is that, that bit of additional information. And if you go too much, just bring back a little bit of black and you can kind of keep tweaking this until you feel that you've got it as intense as you want. You can even enhance that color with a little bit of that rust in the orange as you're finishing up. And then we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your eye in place, step back from it, look at it from a distance, see if you've got everything on there that you want. Then you can just wash and dry that small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the first layer to our feathers on our bird. So I'm gonna use my small brush. The colors I'm using are purple, blue, yellow, rust. That might be it. Maybe, oh, some black, because we got little black feathers coming on here. Maybe some white. Maybe some gray too. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just call them out as I use them. So what I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna put my blue sections of the bird. So this bird has a couple of different shades of blue, anywhere from like a light teal color to a dark, like ultramarine-y, purple-y kind of blue. So I'm gonna start with just a base coat of my cobalt, and then when we build the feathers, we can, we can tweak the, um, the shades of blue. So I've got my first section of blue is gonna occupy quite a bit of real estate on the bottom part of the bird. So this bird has um, blue feathers down at the bottom. When I'm doing this layer of my feathers, I, I am mindful that I'm painting feathers. However, I don't need them to be perfect right now, but I am going to be leaving where I, where I feel that they're going to be um, intermingling with another colored section, I'm going to leave rough edges along that area. So this is going to be um, a section, there's a little section of these these blue feathers up in through here, and if you see some of your white through it at this point, no worries, because again, we've got a lot that we're going to be doing on this bird, so being ha having this first coat not executed 100% is totally fine. I'm just bringing this blue all the way down this left-hand side of the horn, and I'm leaving a little sliver of unpainted area all the way to that left-hand side of the bird because there's a, um, a yellowy type of feather wing that this bird has as well. I'm bringing the blue all the way down to the end of the tail. This bird has these cute little black... Um, feathers that are, I'm going to add in a minute. They're almost like singular pieces of feathers, but we'll add those in a minute. This blue section is the main part of the tail. And then there's another blue section on the top of the head or like more towards the back of the head, but it works its way into the front a little bit. So I might incorporate it into the front a little bit as well. And this is a time where you can certainly start to bring your feathers out into the um, past the footprint of the, the 
bird a little bit. If you do, that's okay. That's just going to make the bird look fluffier. And these birds, oh my God, some of them are so fluffy and so cute. <laughs> so that's why we're choosing to do it. And it's an African kind of bird. So this, um, and rhinos, they are indigenous to Africa as well. So we, they all just working in my whole master plan of this cute little face off. So I put some in the front part of the head and through here a little bit. I'm also going to put a touch in the beak. The beak is not blue, but I'm going to have little reflections of blue in it. I think I'm going to bring this in the head just a little bit more so we can have more of this blue kind of intermingled with those head feathers a bit. Then I'm going to wash and dry my brush. And the next color that I'm going to go for is my purple. So I'm just going to be using my fluorescent purple, and this is going to go all the way, this entire midsection in through here, it's going to go all the way up to the beak, and I'm just going to kind of be pulling it down in the direction that I feel that these feathers would be growing off of the body. This is going to come all the way down to the top of this blue section in through here, maybe even intermingling a little bit, and then I'm going to bring it all the way down to the other blue section down in through here. And if some of your blue is still wet and you bump into it and it starts to blend in with your purple, just roll with it. That's gonna make it look even more natural. So I'm bringing this all the way to the edge of the bird in through here, bringing it down to my blue section, and then I'm going to wash my brush in order to take care of the other sections of the bird. So that's going to be my purple section. I'm going to wash and dry my brush. The next section that I'm going to do is like behind the eye or the, the eye is going to go right about here. So in through this section leading down into the back, this is like a rusty kind of color, but then it transitions into this wing that ends up being like a yellowy brown color. So I'm going to start with rust and brown on my brush at the same time. I'm going to, in essence, kind of um, do this entire area where my eye is going to sit. I'm bringing a little bit of that rust and brown in through here. I'll put my eye on top later, but right now I'm just going to kind of utilize this color to provide a nice base. It's also going to give me a nice... Um, area where I get to transition these feathers on the forehead up into the brighter feathers on top of the head. So rust and brown is what I have on my brush right now. And I'm going to work my way over towards this left hand side, again, utilizing a brush stroke that I feel is in the direction of the feathers as they're coming off of the body. So kind of like curved to the left in through here, and you can overlap it in front of that blue or in front of the purple. Just get them to, you know, seem like they live together a little bit. And right as I'm coming down and on top of next to this purple and on top of this blue, this is about where that other wing is going to, or where the wing is going to start. So without washing my brush, I'm just going to pick up some yellow. So I'm going to have some dirtiness on my brush to start this back wing in through here. We're gonna make it look a little bit more brown and kind of a duller type of color later, but I used yellow, now I'm picking up a touch of brown. So I've got that little bit more darkness on it as it's coming down into this bottom section in through here and I'm getting it to intermingle with that blue a little bit just so I don't have any unpainted um, area within my base coat here and then I'm going to uh, wash my brush. I'm going to pick up some black paint to put these tiny little feathers on down in through here. So I just wash my brush and these are like these singular kind of feathers that just kind of come off the edge of the tail. They're pretty long too. They can be just about as long as the tail itself. And we'll put highlights on them later, but right now just kind of getting that, that um, the idea that they're there. I'm also, I'm not gonna do my feet. I think I'm gonna wait to do my feet until we've got the whole um, rhino's body done, but I wanna put a base coat up in through here too. So I'm just gonna wash and dry my brush. I think I'm gonna put a little bit of my gray and white as a base coat for what will be the white feathers on the head. So just gray and white 
is what I'm using as my base coat for the head as well as I'll put that on the beak also. So your goal is to get a second coat on the entire bird. Whether it's perfectly executed or not, just something that is going to give us a nice good coverage throughout the throughout the bird. So when we go to do all of the little details, we've got a, a wonderful base to work with. And that's all I'm going to do for that. I'm going to switch to my medium brush for the next step so you can put your small brush away. Take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're gonna finish our rhino. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are white, brown, gray, blue, and I might go into my black a little bit, but if I do, I'll let you know. So what I'm, my biggest goal here is to finish my skin so it looks like it has a nice completed layer on it so all my shadows talk with all the mid-tones mid and that we add the highlights. So the highlights, I'm assuming the light source is up top. So I'm gonna have a big highlight in through here on the rhino's forehead. I'll have a highlight here. I'll have a big highlight on the top of this horn in through here. And then I'll have little highlights on anything else that I feel will be popping out of the rhino. So wrinkles, the top part of the wrinkles, maybe in through here where this part of the forehead would pop out a little bit more. And then I'll get those highlights in essence to blend into the rest of the gray. So I'm gonna start with white and a touch of brown on my brush. So this way I'm not starting all the way white on my highlights and I can build them even lighter if I need to, but I'm starting with white and a little bit of brown. My biggest highlight that I have is gonna be in through here. So I'm gonna put that on in through this area, bringing it all the way to my edge and bringing, I'm gonna have a little bit up in through here as well. I want this to be pretty darn big in through this area. So it alludes to the fact that this forehead is nice and wide and I'm gonna get that on in through there. While I have this color on my brush, I'm gonna just kind of introduce it into these other areas that I'm gonna to want to have um, nice brightness on it. So that's gonna definitely be the top part of this horn as well. And then what I'm gonna do while it's still kind of wet, I like to wipe my brush off on my paper towel and get it to just blend into the neighboring areas. So that way I don't have just a firm line where it's ended. And you can certainly have yours, you know, trail off into the, into the wrinkles. You can pick up a little bit of the original gray if you wanted to, but while the, the, color is still kind of wet around the edges, that's when I like to just kind of get it to blend in. I will add additional stuff to it as well, but just during this um, initial application, this helps me to get it in, to start in a nice natural kind of way. So I'm gonna reload my brush with white and a touch of brown to continue on my quest of having my brightest highlights kind of um, introduced initially. So brown and white, I'm gonna bring this all the way to the edge of this horn in through here. And then once I've got it on here, then I will, of course I went into my background a little bit, that's all right. <laughs> you can always make corrections in your background. And then while it's drying, I'm gonna get it to blend out into the neighboring gray. And you can certainly, Put more paint on your brush if you if it's not blending the way that you want to. You can certainly add more paint to your brush. You can pick up some of that original gray to get it to, to blend out and just make it look like it is definitely um, intermingled with it and it's giving it that nice kind of um, gradual gradual way into the into the horn itself or into that piece of piece of animal. So that's looking pretty good to me. I think I want a little bit more coming down in through here. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my gray and maybe a touch of brown just to kind of get this to look like it belongs a little bit more in through here. Yeah, that looks good. And then I'm going to utilize these same colors, the white and the brown, for additional light areas and or to make these, um, these wrinkles blend in with the base coat. So I'm not gonna do much, I'm gonna just wipe my brush off on my paper towel. So right now I have white, 
gray, and brown on my brush. And I'm going to use the remnants to add these lighter areas in, in wherever I want. So if I want some additional little wrinkles, I can take my brush and kind of use it in a um, wiggly type of fashion to give myself the illusion of the peaks of these wrinkles. I can put it in through the peak of these bumps. So you don't need much when you're adding the the highlight to um, to these areas because you've already in essence kind of told the story of where the dip and the valley is. Now what you're doing is you're you're getting that dip and valley to transition into the lighter areas that you want to be the peaks of the wrinkles. So when you're doing this, I'm reloading, but I'm not going to use much. So whenever you reload, just wipe your brush off so you don't have a lot on your brush. So that way you can be in control of where you want these to go. So when I'm doing this, again, I'm not going necessarily over all of those dark marks, but I can go near them. So I'm adding another tonal value into that area that's going to um, give the illusion of this being more three-dimensional as opposed to two-dimensional and just having um, two colors the high spot and the low spot. So this is going to allow us to have more um, more depth and more information within these. And I just kind of keep looking for where I want those light spots to be. So again, for me, it's gonna be in the areas that pop out the most, as well as in any little wrinkly areas. So right now I just keep kind of alternating my brown, gray, and white so I can increase the intensity of these little wrinkles wherever I want them to be. Maybe this one's got a little bit more in through here just to get that to pop out a little bit more. I'm going to load my brush with a little bit more paint now because I've got bigger areas down in through here and I don't want to um, struggle with having to rub the paint. So I did add a bit more paint to my brush right now and I'm going to kind of seek out these lighter areas within the um, within the area that I started those wrinkles in earlier. And this is where I'm gonna get them to really start popping out because I'm adding just another value of that, of that color, which is gonna make them pop out just a little bit more. My value is a brighter tone or a lighter tone. So that's gonna give you that additional bit of information. I might darken some of this in a minute as well, just to push it back a little bit further. But right now I'm just kind of getting all of the information for the wrinkles. I think I'm gonna put a little bit more brown in through here just to get this to look like it's got a little bit more texture on this horn in through here as it's coming out. And of course you can really have fun with tweaking yours whatever way you want. I want this horn to look a little bit fuller in through here, so I'm adding a little bit of the remnants of the lightness on my brush to get it to pop out a little bit more. And you can use, do that with anything. If you want an area to pop out even more, like if I go up to this top here and wanted this area to pop out a little bit more, I can just take the remnants on my brush and just kind of scrub them on there in like um, a little bit of what's referred to as a scumbling effect. And then I can just make sure that it kind of blends in or makes sense with the neighboring area. And that immediately just gets that area to pop out a little bit more because I'm adding that lighter value to it, which makes it look like it's closer to the viewer. And then I'm just gonna work on these little um, wrinkles above the eye here. I did just put brown with a touch of black on my brush because I feel like I want a little bit more wrinkles up in this area. So just kind of adding a little bit more information in through here, maybe a touch more coming out. So you can do the same thing too. If you're going about it and you're like, mm, I, I, I really wish I had a couple more deep wrinkles in through here, just add them. You know, there's no, there's nobody telling you that you have to do the same exact number of wrinkles as I have. You can certainly add more or subtract or, you know, I think I want a little bit more darkness in through here. So you just kind of keep playing. Once you've got the main information in there, you can certainly keep tweaking it as much as you want to. And I'm going to add in a minute, once I get this to the 
intensity that I want, I'm going to add these hues of blue in order to give it another um, value to this, this gray type of color. So I just added white to my brush so I can get this area in through here to be even brighter. I really want this to kind of scream that it is the brightest area in through here. So I just added some white to my brush to make sure that I can get that area to be the brightest and to give, you know, kind of keep the story of there's a little crease in through here where the forehead kind of meets that, um, the horn. I'm going to add a touch of additional brightness in through this tip over here. Again, I just really want to sell the story of some brightness of, that's, you know, within the atmosphere around these, these beautiful animals. And in order to do that, I've got to show the light somewhere. And so for me, I'm showing the light on these, on these animals, which is going to tell everybody how bright it is outside. And then I, you can certainly do any additional little tweaks in through here. I'm thinking that that's pretty darn good. Um, and you know, you could certainly use a little bit of yellow or anything else that you wanted to, to sell this story. But I am going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel right now. And I'm going to pick up a teeny tiny bit of blue paint with a little bit of gray and a little bit of white. So teeny tiny bit, you don't need a lot at all. You could even just use blue with a little bit of water on it. And this is going to give me, oh, maybe I need a little bit more blue. I'm, I'm very hesitant with the blue because I don't want it to look too unnatural. So I just picked up a little bit more blue and I'm gonna get this blue type of um, tone to be represented in some of my animal in some of this animal because if you dissect again different colors gray can go steer anywhere from like a blue to a brown so if you can get those different um, values in there it will make it look like some of the areas are shiny some of them are in the shadows so you can certainly have fun with it but you don't necessarily want to do it so much that it you know, the viewer's attention is brought to that blue. Unless you want it to look more on the abstracty side, then you can certainly bring in as much as you want. But I'm using a very little bit on my brush. My brush is kind of on the drier side, and I'm just kind of adding these bits every now and again. I just picked up a little bit of white also because I wanted a little bit more intensity on this eyelid part. And if you feel like you've gone too much, then you just bring back some of that gray paint. You can really, you know, steer it and kind of just keep morphing it into whatever you want. I think I'm going to put a tiny bit of this. So again, I'm using a touch of blue, a touch of gray and a touch of white to get these little um a uh, little i would say um complementary colors along the animal and get them to look a little bit more on the realistic side which is you know you don't typically think that you would need blue to make something like this in the more realistic side but it does definitely help to enhance it maybe maybe it's wet and shiny and it's showing a little reflection of our bird on here i'm going to put a tiny bit up in through this direction and again i'm being very cautious with the amount that i'm putting on here i'm not putting much at all and i'm just giving it the um just a little bit of that information so it looks to me more on the realistic side but you may find that you want to go all in and put lots of blue areas. Maybe you want yours to be more on that abstract side and it has, you know, a lot of this blue. Maybe you want to bring some of the purple into it too. So you just have fun with this. Keep tweaking it all you want. We are going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your beautiful rhino with all of its colors and all of its shadows and highlights and dips and wrinkles, you can uh, put this medium brush away, take out your uh, small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our face and our feet on our bird. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm using are black, white, yellow, maybe a little burnt sienna. 
So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to start with just black on my brush and I'm going to put my eye in place and make a little line on my beak and some nice little shadowy kind of feathers around it. So my beak is going to come into my face a little bit. So what I'm going to do is at the top of my beak, I'm going to draw myself a little bit of an arcing kind of line that's maybe about, I don't know, a quarter to a half of an inch wide. And then I'm going to just pull up these little dark shadowy type of feathers that are going to be at the bottom of the forehead. So that's just a little bit of black. While I have the black on my brush, I added a touch of water to my brush. So I have black plus water. I'm going to give myself the opening for the beak. So this is going to be more towards the bottom portion of the beak. So something like this, just a little tiny skinny line. It doesn't have to be anything too invasive. You could certainly, if it goes too much for you, you can certainly um, let it dry from it and then just paint some gray around it and that'll make it look less big because I know how sometimes our brushes get away from us. Then I'm gonna um, put my eye on. So I'm gonna have my eye kind of in a diagonal line from the dark part of my beak. It's gonna be right about in through here and I'm gonna make it a small circle that's the size I would say of a small P. This is, I'm only going maybe a quarter of an inch wide and quarter of an inch tall. It doesn't have to be that big at all. And then what I'm gonna do with a little bit of that black paint, they have this little, um, almost like a mask type of dark area on the back side of their eye. So I'm just gonna pull this up kind of in a di diagonal type of motion and bring it up. And of course, I'm thinking feathers all the while, so I don't need to have a perfectly straight line. I'm gonna give a little bit of the, that darkness coming in the corner of the eye as well. I think I'm gonna bring this section back just a little bit more so we have a, this a little bit closer to this eye in through there. Yeah, that works. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna wash and dry my brush because I wanna finish that beak. I have some good color on it right now. I think all I want to do is add a highlight. So I'm putting white paint on my beak, on my beak. <laughs> I am going to put white paint on my beak, but I had to put it on my brush first. <laughs> and then I'm going to put it really towards the right side of that beak at, in the area that I think would be sticking out the most. So I just kind of put that little white area in through there. I'm gonna wash or just wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my burnt sienna and yellow for the colored part of my little bird's eye. If your black is still wet in your eye right now, you might wanna wait a minute, but my black seems to be dry. So I'm gonna just give myself a little kind of arcing motion at the bottom part of that eye. Just a teeny tiny little mark like that. I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel, pick up a touch of white paint, and give a little tiny sparkle in the eye. So I'm gonna put my sparkle close to the top left hand corner, and I'm just gonna give myself a little tiny dot or an arcing motion, whatever works for you. Then I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm gonna go ahead and tackle my feet. I have white paint on my brush right now. I'm also gonna pick up um, brown, yellow, and rust. <laughs> so this is going to be my, my toes. So I have white. I picked up a little brown, a little rust, and a little yellow because I want it to be kind of like a dirty brownish kind of color with different color variations in it. So I have those four colors on my brush. I want it to look like he's kind of just holding on with both feet. These birds have these cute, almost like fat little bird toes, which is kind of cute. So I'm going to put three coming on this side, maybe a little more white so we can see this a little bit better. So I have one and I'm gonna go uh, two and three. And then this one over here, I'm gonna have kind of coming off the side, one, two, and maybe a third one in through here. I'm going to wash and dry my brush so I can put some shadow underneath these toes. I just picked up a touch of black and I'm going to just put some little black lines 
in between these toes so it looks like there's a little bit of a shadow underneath them something like this just giving that authenticity and letting the viewer understand that there's some shape to them so just a tiny bit of black underneath those little tiny toes wash and dry my brush put picking up some white paint to put a little bit of a highlight on these toes and maybe a little claw of sorts so you can i'm just kind of dotting in a little bit of highlight where the toe would kind of curve out and poke out the most and if you felt you could get away with a little tiny claw feel free to just really with a dainty little brush give yourself a tiny little claw sticking out in through there and then we are going to be utilizing the same brush for the next step so once you've got your feet and your face done you can wash and dry the small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're putting the final layer on our feathers for our cute little bird here so i'm going to be using my small brush and i'm going to be using all of my colors except for probably green <laughs> and of course I'll call them out as I use them. So this bird that I'm attempting to represent is this cute little lilac breasted roller bird <laughs> and they're just adorable and they can be really fluffy they can be soft muted colors or really vibrant colors but they seem to have this distinct kind of pattern to the colors that we've um, emulated thus far so as I'm going through this process I'm going to be kind of um, fiddling with the shades of purple with the shades of blue to give it this um, fluffier type of look and to give these feathers a little bit of dimension but when you're doing yours you can certainly make yours more vibrant or more subtle and just have fun with it I'm going to attempt to get some good dimension by adding some shadows and stuff behind the horn um, it, underneath the the wing over in through here and I'll be calling out the colors as I use them and what I'm doing so I'm going to first start with this tail so I have these little black areas in through here. I'm picking up a tiny bit of white paint and I'm going to give these little bits of highlights on the side of these little black pieces of the wing. So this is just something that's gonna allow the viewer to see them more. And as I have that white on my brush, I'm gonna come up the back side of this tail feather and add a little bit of highlight into it. Now what I'm gonna do I'm just going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel and I'm going to pick up blue with a teeny bit of black paint to give myself a little bit of a shadow underneath this tail feather um, that's being shadowed by the horn. So this is black and blue on my brush and just be careful of the black because it can really take over and make that whole area blue. I mean uh, black so if um, if you're finding that that's happening, just wipe your brush off and pick up some more of that blue. So that's all I'm gonna do underneath there. I'm gonna continue on my blue and black plight and add a little bit of shadow underneath um, this body in through here. So I have blue and black on my brush and I'm going to just um, wiggle in a little bit of darkness on this bottom side of the body. So this again is going to help add that um, dimensional type of element to the bird and make it look nice and fluffy and make it look like it has form and all those good things that we always desire to have in, in our paintings. While I have this dark color on my brush, I don't need to wash it. I'm just gonna wipe it off on my paper towel. They have this dark blue area up in through here it's almost like a ultramarine kind of purpley blue so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my blue and mix it with a little bit of my purple and this is going to give me a darker kind of blue you can even add a tiny bit of black to it and it's almost like a ultramarine blue kind of color i'm just going to put a little bit of that up in through this area in through here so again that's just speaking to the um, different markings on this bird so we're just giving that little bit of a dark blue spot in through there I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel while I'm down here I'm gonna finish this blue area but I am going to be using my blue 
plus white. So I'm just taking blue plus white on my brush, and this is gonna finish up this little blue section in through here. So blue plus white, I'm gonna get a couple of these feathers to just kind of pop out a little bit. And you don't really need to do much, I just want this area to be a little bit lighter in nature than that dark blue section, so that's why I'm utilizing the, the white on my brush as well. And I'm not doing much, just these little tiny um, strokes, you can even bring it out a little bit past here. And I'll show you different shades of blue in a minute, but right now I'm just using my cobalt blue plus white. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush right now, and I'm going to go in for this purple section in through here. So again, I want there to be a little bit of dimension, so I have my purple already. I'm going to pick up purple plus a little bit of brown to start so I can get a little bit of um, darker pieces within this bottom section. So purple plus brown is what I picked up and this is just giving me a little bit of darkness down here. As I work my way towards the top area, I am gonna lighten it, but underneath, this purple is gonna come all the way to underneath the beak and underneath the beak I want to be kind of in the shadow. So I'm gonna pick up, a t I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel. I'm picking up a little bit of black paint to give myself a little bit of shadow underneath that beak in through there. Then I'm gonna wash and dry that brush and I'm gonna finish my purple section with purple and white. So I have purple and white on my brush and this is where I'm really gonna fluff out that chest. I'm going to give some of these feathers, let them kind of go outside of my original footprint and they're really just kind of short, quick brush strokes in the direction that I want those feathers to look like they're coming out of the body. So again, purple and white is where I'm what, what I'm using right now, but you I guess the the biggest trick for me is just to not overdo it. So you don't need a ton of paint, you don't need to blend this too much. You just really want to do these short, quick little strokes. And if you feel like you did overdo it, then just let it dry for a minute and come back and you can do another layer on top of it. But if you can get this um, variety of shades and, and little pops of the feathers just kind of poking out of the body, that's awesome. And as I get towards these areas where I feel like it would pop out a little bit more. I'm just going a little bit shorter of a brush stroke and allowing for that direction to appear in, um, in those feathers. And then once I've got this section all nice and completed, and of course you can tweak it all you want. Once I get that done, I'm just gonna wash and dry my brush after I put more purple on right in through here. Well, a little bit more purple in through here. Um, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to do this wing back in through here. So this is just like, a. will do this wing and this brown section too, because they kind of blend in with each other. So really I just want to put a highlight on the back side of this. I just picked up some white paint, so I'm putting a nice light highlight on the back side of this wing. And as it's coming down, I'm going to be pulling out a couple of these pieces so it looks like you can uh, detect the dimension to it. So the white is going to provide you with the highlight from the bright sun and the um, pulling out those little pieces is going to give you that variety of um, or the ability to see the details of that wing. And then if you want to, you can pick up maybe a little bit of yellow and brown as you're working your way down towards the bottom of the wing and this is going to give you um, those individual little pieces, maybe a little bit more brown on my brush. This will help the viewer to understand that maybe this piece is almost overlapping the other ones. But again, high detail on this is not necessary because it is just this cute little bird that we're just uh, emulating the, you know, the colors and the feel of the bird and it's wonderful discussion or moment it's happy, having with the um, the rhinoceros. So, oh, I want to do this section up here too. So I washed and dried my brush. You don't need to. I'm going to pick up rust yellow and white just to finish out this little um, section by the face. 
and I really am just adding just these little bits of feathers so it makes sure that I have a little bit of that dimensional element to it so it speaks to there being um, thickness in it. You can go a little bit darker as you get towards that face. So I just picked up more rust and then maybe as I get towards that eye, if you feel like you need to do anything more or make it any darker, feel free to add maybe rust and brown. Just try not to get it too confusing with the, um, with the eye itself. And then I'm going to finish the top part of the head. So the top part of the head, I'm going to want to I'm going to be using a, like an aqua kind of color. So I'm going to be using my blue. You can take your cobalt blue. I, I've got a little section of it that I've pre-made here. So you can take your blue, mix it with some of your yellow because blue and yellow makes green. So if we add just a little bit of yellow to our um, blue, that's going to make it in this like teal kind of color. And then if you add just a teeny tiny touch of white to it, you're going to get this beautiful like light aqua type of color. So it doesn't have to be exactly as mine. You could even just go with a light blue, but if you want to give it a little bit more authenticity to this bird, adding that bit of this like little teal color definitely helps to um, sell the story of this being this real bird. So I've got I've got a dirty canvas now. I'll have to go back and paint that some green color. I must have had some wet paint on my hand. Um, so I'm going to be utilizing this teal type of color on top of the blue that I had. And I'm going to be overlapping it and allowing for that original blue to show through a little bit. I'm going to add some white to my brush in a minute as well. I'm going to put a little bit of this maybe in this forehead. And now my goal right now is just to get the the rest of the forehead done and and get it to have little flecks of this greenish kind of color as well as white in it and blue so now that i've got that little teal color i'm going to pick up some white without washing my brush and this is going to give me all these beautiful cute little fluffy pieces that i'm going to bring out further than my footprint of my head that i had originally and it's going to allow me to have this dimension to it. I'm not pushing hard. I'm using just the teeny tiny tip of my brush and I'm bringing it in a curved uh, brush stroke kind of towards the eye at this point for this little section in through here. I'm overlapping those original colors that I had so we can see them, but they're just acting as a background for this color. I'm gonna put a little kind of eyelid area in through here so you know my brush works well for these tiny little sections but if you felt that you needed to you know use a smaller brush you could feel free to to change brushes whenever you need to sometimes with these little tiny areas we all have our favorite little detail brush that works best for our own hand so you can certainly modify or change yours as much as you want so just getting this to kind of blend into this blue area and then I'm going to add a bright highlight on the back of the head so I just picked up white paint right now and I'm going to add these little just like we did on the back wing here I'm going to add these little tiny pieces of what would be the highlighted pieces of the feathers on this back side of the head. So I don't need to do the whole thing, just giving these little tiny pieces. And if you feel to, like you want to, you can go back into that teal or aqua just to make sure that you've got everything connected and it looks like it belongs together and your head is as fluffy as you want it to be. And then we have one little step left to go, just making sure I didn't miss any areas on my birdie here. And of course you can keep fiddling with yours all you want. And then we're gonna be utilizing this small brush for the next step. So once you've got your beautiful, cute little bird all nice and fluffed out here, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna be using my small brush, black paint. I'm signing mine in the bottom left-hand corner. I do mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol 
Whatever you want for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. It's your painting. You sign it however you would like. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful animal portrait. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.